Folks, if you don't know, Elon Musk has been fighting tooth and nail to try to save free speech, not just in this country, but in other countries, too. He's fighting for the Brazilian people's right to question their elections. And that's what this whole Twitter ban, uh, the fight between Brazil's Supreme Court Justice Alejandro de Mores and, and uh, Elon Musk is all about. The people there want to have the opportunity to see other than government propaganda. Well, on Truth so Social, there's a little government propaganda there, but also you get free speech over there. So you get two sides to every story. You get more than one version, and they don't like it. So they want to censor Elon Musk. They try to do this to him in Australia. Uh, the European Union has talked about it as well. And now we've got Brazil mad as a wet hen behind uh, the fact they can't control the people of of their country if they can't control what's being said, who's saying it, uh, how the truth is being spread. And so they really think that X is a threat to democracy, if there is a, such thing as a democracy in Brazil. But at any rate, i got a couple of clips here for you. Elon Musk has dropped uh, many of the crimes against humanity, uh, human rights violations that he accuses not only the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court justice over there, but the police for being a part of as well. Bad stuff, folks. Won't get into that too much, but I was watching The Hill, which I usually don't watch, but occasionally they'll have kind of a kind of, kind of an unbiased uh, panel. They'll have a moderate with a progressive on there. I mean, they don't really have any conservatives over there, but they do have like a moderate and a, and a progressive, and they'll let them do a little bit of commentary back and forth, trying to give the channel a little bit of a, um, in theory, an open forum to uh, discuss both 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 uh, opinions. I kind of like that. Not that I'm a big fan of of the show, but I do like that they at least have deferring opinions as an option. A lot of a lot of channels have only one narrative, and that's it. No argumentative, uh, no back and forth, and that just gets really kind of boring at times. But we'll go ahead and get into this. I've actually got two clips for you. Um, you can tell which one is the progressive in the group pretty quick. We'll go ahead and start with this one. And this is just kind of the backstory on how we got where we're at with Brazil and Elon Musk going toe to toe. All right, bear with me, folks, while I swap screens here. Here we go. Put me down here in the bottom. All right, we'll play part of this in the, the next one as well. Brazil and X are in a war over words. In fact, Brazil's Supreme Court ordered X to suspend operation in the Latin American nation. The Supreme Court also blocked local bank accounts of Elon Musk's Starlink satellite internet firm. This is the latest chapter in a feud between Elon Musk and Justice Alexandra de Moraes over free speech, far-right accounts, and misinformation. The showdown has erupted into public view on X. Free speech advocates like Michael Schellenberger had this to say. Quote, Brazil appears to be a democracy, but it's not. President at Lula Oficial and Supreme Court Justice Alexandra de Mores are preparing to shut down X a few weeks before the elections. Their acts are illegal and unconstitutional. It's time to call Brazil what it is, a dictatorship. So what is going on here and what is at stake? Jessica, it looks like Elon Musk is accusing Brazil of censoring free speech, or at least attempting to, by ordering X to crack down on hate speech and misinformation. And Elon Musk is saying, no, we're going to operate by the same content moderation standards that we do in the United States and other countries. And we're not going to be bullied into basically getting rid of content that the Brazilian government does not like. And what gives a Brazilian government what makes the Brazilian government think they have the right to tell someone that owns a social media platform, no, you got to change your, you got to change your policies for our country because we don't like how you run your platform worldwide. So it needs to be critiqued for every country according to their policies, bylaws, and how much censorship they want to include on the site. That'll never work. And Brazil is responding by saying, okay, well, then you can't operate here.
Yeah, I mean, I I cannot see a world where anyone who defends the TikTok ban in the United States cannot understand where Lula and the Brazilian government is coming from. Let's not. Forget well, here's the progressive. Her name is Je Jessica Burbank. I've actually got two clips of her. She is so far into the censorship. She believes that the uh, Lula and the Brazilian government have every right to not allow people like Elon Musk to give their citizens access to more than one version of the, of the story. Uh, for example, questioning your elections over there. That's what, where all this shitstorm started. They're going to shut down. They're contemplating shutting down um, X over there behind this behind their upcoming elections because they want to push a narrative. They want the people to be silenced, and they want to cheat in the election and not have any uh, political recourse from the from the citizens of of that country. That's the problem. That's why they're trying to shut it down. Now, this is actually a four-day-old clip. We'll play a little bit more of Miss Jessica, and then we'll go to the second clip. Uh, a couple things I want to say about that one as well. Don't forget Latin America has been, you know, the victim of a lot of CIA operations, a lot of intentional coups done by the U.S. government and the deep state. And this is an American-based app where the, the now CEO once said, we will coup whoever we want in reference to Bolivia. Bolivia is a lithium rich country. Lithium is put in a lot of the batteries, batteries that Tesla cars rely on. So she is equating Elon Musk to the CIA and our government and our intelligence agencies uh, interfering in elections and things, which they have done, no doubt about it. I agree that any country probably doesn't want any other country to subvert their elections. I get that. But that's not what's going on here. That is what the CIA has done in the past, and I'm totally against all of that as well. But she is trying to say that Elon Musk is just uh, right in on the government plan to subvert their election. No, Elon Musk is trying to do the opposite of that. He is not trying to subvert their elections to the will of America. He's trying to subvert. He's trying to subvert their attempt to censor the truth. Uh, when they said there's nothing to see here, we don't steal our elections and nobody's allowed to talk about it. Well, you know damn well, Elon Musk is going to be keyboard warrior on that shit in a hurry. I love it. I love it. I'm glad to see this man stands up and fights, uh, not just for America, but for human rights. Uh, I think he is probably one of the greatest uh, assets our American, uh, one of the greatest American assets we have, even though he's not from America. Uh, not just being a great inventor, but being someone that is a champion for free speech, uh, willing to work with the next coming administration, uh, cares about the planet. I'm not talking about global warming garbage, but cares about the planet, cares about mankind in such a way that um, makes him super controversial. Uh, the best money Elon ever spent, as far as I'm concerned, was buying our free speech back by buying X. Without X... Think of all the things we would not know right now. Think of how the government would still be running roughshod over us with the lying, with the censorship, with the pumpiness, the, the fake news garbage from every channel out there while they censor us for trying to have the truth on platforms like YouTube and such. We'll go ahead and get back into this. Definitely interesting on. So the idea that this is an app run by the CEO and the information may very well be in the direction of, you know, fomenting a lack of support for Lula in, in Brazil, that the app might be used to push a particular political agenda or narrative in Latin America. Elon Musk, he's got his opinion. If he don't, if he think Lula's a, Lula's a tyrant, he's allowed to say Lula's a tyrant. She's got a problem with the uh, Opinion, what is she doing on a show called The Rising, The Hill, where it's literally two commentators get together and they bank off of each other with their opinions? Uh, it seems like she didn't have a problem with opinion and free speech here in America, as long as it benefits her party, the progressive left. But when it comes to people deserving to know the truth about what's really going on behind closed doors with the Brazilian government, oh, no, 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 nothing to see here. Don't even look there. 
it'll offend somebody. She's definitely a lefty, folks. Let's go ahead and get into the second video. This actually uh, says a little bit more about who she is as a person. And I just thought this was definitely worth sharing. Now the country's telecom regulator. On taking down another one of Elon Musk's companies, this time the country is going after Musk's satellite internet company Starlink. Now the country's telecom regulators threatened to sanction Starlink and said they could revoke its license to operate in Brazil. That came hours after Brazil's Supreme Court upheld a decision to ban Elon Musk's X nationwide after the platform refused to comply with court orders. Justices had previously ordered X to be blocked after the company refused to name a local legal representative as required by law. According to the ruling, X will stay suspended until it complies with court orders and pays outstanding fines that exceed $3 million. Justice Alexandre de Moraes set a daily fine of $8,900 for anyone using a VPN to access X. The judge also issued an order last week freezing Starlink's finances in Brazil and preventing Musk's business from conducting financial transactions in that country. Now, Musk, meanwhile, accuses Brazil's top judge of acting as a, quote, very evil dictator for suspending X. Musk also tweeted, quote, free speech is the bedrock of democracy and an unelected pseudo judge in Brazil is destroying it for political purposes. In another tweet, Musk wrote, quote, the oppressive regime in Brazil is so afraid of the people learning the truth that they will bankrupt everyone who tries. In the ruling, one of the panel justices said X, quote, seems to believe it's above the law. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva told reporters that the, quote, world is not obliged to put up with Musk's far-right ideology just because he's rich. So the, we're continuing to follow developments in Brazil with uh, Elon Musk and his companies. What did you make of this, Jessica? Well, it, it sounds like a little bit of the same playbook the United States has always had whenever a multinational corporation wants to do business in a country that doesn't agree with the business practice. And so Elon Musk trying to have X be accessible to the Brazilian people to get his propaganda to them through satellite is crazy to me. He's trying to get his propaganda to them through satellite. X is not a place of propaganda. Actually, X has got all kinds of stuff over there. If you, if you ever get on X, you know it is not a propaganda site. Now, there is Kamala, Kamala Harris HQ over there. So, yeah, there's definitely some propaganda over there. You may find the hill rising over there and so many other mainstream media outlets. So, definitely, there's some propaganda on there. But as far as uh, the way Twitter works, uh, public opinion, public narrative, uh, likes and reposts on the videos actually feeds the algorithm to most relevant, most important, most watched, makes it to the top of the list. It's the way it's supposed to be. It's not about right-wing conspiracy controlling the narrative. That's bullshit. That is not the way Twitter works. Twitter used to work that way for the left wing until Elon bought it and kicked our government out of it. At one point, the government and all them, all these wokies that were running, uh, uh, running Twitter had that thing all screwed up. I wouldn't even go over there at the time. But now it's pretty much fixed. It's probably one of the best sites to actually go find the truth on. And it may be controversial to dig for the truth and find it and repost it to somebody that may not want to hear it. But that's actually what censors, uh, that's actually what's what you call a uh, political dialogue and discourse is what we need in this country and in every country. You need to be able to talk about it because if you can't talk about it, you know what comes next. All right, folks, let's get back into this. This lady's a little bit crazy. Uh, she doesn't like Elon Musk. She's definitely a progressive lefty uh, working on the rising. But I do like to see the banter, the back and forth, because it seems like uh, the main guy on the show here. Um, he, he's at least trying to be a little bit of a uh, neutral to the situation. This idea that, you know, the Brazilian people, if using a device that's not able to be regulated by their government, Elon Musk by satellite could usher in propaganda to them 
like leaflets falling out of a CIA plane. It's just amazing how, you know, modern technology creates new ways for them to intervene with other countries' election, political process, access to information. It's just crazy that he could give this entire country. You heard that, didn't you? She doesn't like the idea of somebody having access to information that may affect the election. There it is. Free access to a website that's banned legally by satellite. And potentially the government could have no way of, oh. of taking that satellite down. It really makes, you know, yeah. the case for why the, the Space Force is even a thing. That you, eventually we're going to be fighting battles in outer space over satellites. You say it's crazy. I say it's awesome <laughs> that the uh, that the government's yeah. uh, attempts to the Brazilian government's attempts to censor speech to prevent people from receiving information uh, can be thwarted by this uh, private uh, internet Starlink Good system. Good job. But You're right. uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of this speaks to what Elon Musk and um, other people like Michael Schellenberger, who we have on the show frequently, have talked about um, these efforts, you know, internationally to grapple with companies like X and Starlink and other social media companies and shut down debate and discussion, purge what they say is misinformation, is false, false speech. Um, you know, I think we have learned here in the U.S. to be very wary of, you know, experts, government elites coming in and trying to decide which speech is, you know, misinformation and which is not. Obviously, there was a lot of erroneous uh, dis uh, um, labeling of speech as hateful or misinformation during COVID, um, during other subjects. You know, that doesn't mean that the criticism of is always wrong but or the contrarianism is always uh, correct but sometimes it is and the best way to sort it out is to have broad free speech norms and and uh, and debate that's something was he just saying that they censored us during the covid lockdowns and he was wrong I can't believe it. I think that's just what I heard. Something we do broadly have in the U.S. because we have First Amendment protections in Brazil and in Europe, as the attempts we've seen uh, recently against Telegram, against again X by uh, the EU. There are uh, there's a class of bureaucratic elites in other countries who want to stifle dissent and stifle speech, and they are yep. going to use those countries' more uh, permissive of censorship legal structures to, to achieve that. Um, this is something that is affecting um, X, uh, Telegram, it's going to be affecting, it's affected Facebook in, in other countries, and Mark Zuckerberg obviously recently complaining that the U.S. was a little different during COVID, um, saying that he was forced to, or persuaded to do um, lots of censorship that he didn't want to do by the U.S. government, but again, these examples from Brazil and other places show how much worse it can be elsewhere. Yeah, I think the technology is cool. I mean, the fact that we can give people access to internet by satellite is a cool thing. It becomes crazy and a little bit scary when it's a billionaire with a clear agenda trying to push. In what is the clear agenda of having X in Brazil? Like she really knows the answer to that one. Information to people. I mean, that's what X is blocked over. That's that's what the judge's decision hinged on, is Elon Musk having a website where false information about the election was pushed to the people in an effort, what, to change the politics of Brazil? The idea that one very wealthy man could have that much power is what makes me say it's crazy and not it's cool. When Ukraine was, was at war, and Starlink was being used to provide internet access to people experiencing war. That that was something that helped people get necessary medications who are suffering from cancer. That's cool. It so it's not cool. It, it's cool to be able to use Starlink satellite system during wartime in order to get supplies and medications and information communications going because, say, all the towers are down. It's cool to do that. But it's not cool for the people of Brazil to have access to X on their cell phones because they might hear that they need to be careful with their election process because Elon Musk has done expose the way they handle their elections down there. And that is the main crutch of this whole thing. Uh, she's not defending free speech. She is defending the right to suspend speech over elections. That's the problem here, folks. We've seen it with uh, Smartmatic. We've seen it with the Minion voting machines. We've seen it with uh, billion-dollar lawsuits against people like Mike Lindell. Uh, 
we've seen it with people suing Elon Musk left and right for um, for just trying to get the truth out there. Um, I would have to say Elon Musk is the ultimate free speech warrior in, in the world. Not in the not in the country, but in the world, he is fighting for other countries' right to at least know their elections are stolen too, and they need to stand up and show up and make sure they vote these idiots out of their country while they still have a chance. That's the main That's the main purpose of this. This lady is nothing but opinion. She has no facts, and she is definitely on the side of the uh, communist Lula Brazilian uh, government right now. It becomes crazy when it's some rich guy trying to influence a country's politics in the direction of being friendly, of American companies' exploitation. Well, but you say influence in a, I mean, his platform is, you know, it's a broadly, it's a free speech platform where people can give information that is true, they can give information that is false, you can decide what you think. I mean, is that really pushing Elon friendly or right wing friendly or American friendly information to just have a platform and say the information is not going to be restricted? I think you could say that the Brazilian authorities are the ones that this Brazilian judge is pushing one kind of information or the other by saying that this place where information I don't like is accessible, that should be prevented. I think, right, I think the people on the other side would say, well, that's the, that's the pushing a narrative, that's the pushing one's politics. It's being done by the, by the people trying to do the censoring, not the people saying just the site should be open to whoever. Right. It would be Absolutely. one thing if this was a website where he didn't have a, an account on it. He didn't push any information on it. He didn't have algorithms that favored right wing speech or favored misinformation about the recent election in Brazil and push that to ex users in Brazil. It you hear she keeps going back. If he wouldn't have pushed that right wing agenda that the election in Brazil was stolen, we wouldn't have had a problem. You see, the problem is right there. If it was just any information people want access to, the most popularly interacted with accounts are at the top of the feed, and it actually operated as a free speech platform, that would be different. But that's not what they found. They did not find that X is operating that way. And so, yeah, I think that that's a big reason why they're upset about it is it's not actually a free speech platform. I mean, Elon Musk himself posted over the weekend um, this quote that it, it's a we won't get into her trash and Elon Musk about his word phrasing and all that stuff. Now she is just straight opinionating attack mode on Elon. This is about attacking his character and his personality, not the fact that he cares about the Brazilian people enough to want to give them Internet access so they at least know what's going on uh, behind closed doors with their crooked ass authoritarian government. That's all I got, got for you today, folks. Hopefully everybody enjoyed. See you here about this time tomorrow. Uh, like, subscribe, and share if you haven't already. And uh, let me know in the comment section what you think about this whole Elon, Brazil, uh, Lula, and Moraes uh, debacle. It's definitely crazy, folks. I don't know what to say about it at this point. I just want to keep you updated if you're if you're behind the times on what's going on with that situation. All right, folks. Everybody